<laughs> All right, let's solve number nine. The first question said, what is thermometric liquid? That is number nine. What is thermo thermometric liquid? All right, you see, in every temperature measuring instrument, like thermometer, clinical thermometer, um, resistant thermometer, thermocouple thermometer, and all kind, or gas thermometer, there is something inside the thermometer that is measuring your temperature. That particular physical quantity, it can be alcohol, it can be mercury, it can be gas, which will be able to detect a change in temperature when you move it from one place to another place. That particular physical quantity is called thermometric substance, not even liquid. Okay, thermometric liquid in this case. All right. Thermometric liquid can either be alcohol or mercury, which can change due to change in temperature. Okay, let me put it this way. Thermometric liquid is that liquid substance which can increase in its volume or change due to slightest change in temperature when you move it from one environment to another environment. Let me give this analysis. If I want to use um, liquid, let's say this, this is, um, you know, inside here is alcohol, all right? So this is the way it is, okay? And you are putting it in a place and the level of alcohol is here. If I move it to another place that is hotter, that is hotter, what I expect this mercury is not to be in this level again. I expect this mercury to be able to increase a little above the level it were to show that the temperature of the new environment has changed. It can increase or reduce. So such a liquid is called thermometric liquid. I'm sure you got it. I said thermometric liquid is any liquid that has the ability to change its volume due to change in temperature while you move it from one environment to the other or when there is a slightest change in temperature in the environment. That is what I will say. The other one says, state the reason for the following design of the feature of clinical thermometer. Number one is narrow ball. You know, when we have a clinical thermometer kind of thing that looks like this, Oh, let me put this way. Huh? Assuming this is the thermometer, you know. Oh, don't bother about this, my drawing. Now, if I have this as a, as a clinical thermometer, why do we have the ball? The ball is this, you know. Uh, let me reduce this. See, something like this. Why is it narrow? Why is it narrow? We made it to be narrow for it to be able to accommodate a slightest change in volume. Now, let me give you an example. If the narrow is this big and it were at this level, when there is a change in temperature, the, the, you know, the change between this level to a little level may not be significant. You may not be able to see it. So the bore of a clinical thermometer has to be very narrow so that we'll be able to notice a slightest change in volume while it increases due to change in temperature. So the idea, the reason for that is for it to be able to visibly see the change in its volume. Number, the other one said, why do we have the design of thick, thin wall? When I talk about thin wall, thin wall, you know, the wall has to be very thin so that it can be able to conduct heat or so that it can be able to detect the heat of the environment. If, if I put this first one and also pad it with another wall and then pad it with another wall, then the wall becomes thick. If it is thick, it may not be able to quickly detect the temperature on its body. That is why it's always very thin and any, any little thing, it will break because we want the glass to be very sensitive to allow heat to penetrate inside for the, the mercury they put inside to be able to notice that there is a change in temperature. So the reason for the thin wall is for it to be easily conduct electricity.
or conduct or absorb ele um, not electricity heat for it to be able to absorb or to detect the change in the heat in the environment the next one is distinguish between heat and temperature all right when we talk about heat heat is an energy uh, which is the total internal energy of the body heat is defined as the total internal energy of the body while temperature is defined as the average kinetic energy of the molecules of the body or we can say that temperature is defined as okay i can also say that heat is this i can say that heat is defined as the form of energy that is on transit due to difference in temperature why temperature is defined as that which measures the average kinetic energy of the molecules of the body so these are the answer i'm going to give to that then the next one is 9c okay so the next one is 9c the question you are seeing there 9c say explain why evaporation leads to cooling Evaporation leads to cooling. Okay, let me say this is the container. If this is the container, and um, <clears throat> and then there are molecules on this part, right? Now, now this is the level. Okay, now evaporation means that this this molecule at this level at the surface here, they will be moving out. They will be moving out now as they are moving out what is happening remember that temperature is defined as the average kinetic energy of the molecules of a body so kinetic energy of each of these molecules when you add all of them and divide it by the number of molecules per se which i know is not possible because it is an elementary particle it is a subatomic particle, you know. Uh, you may not be able to find the number of molecules because they are innumerable. So, but the average kinetic energy of the molecules in that, this content is what is the temperature. Now, see what happens. During evaporation, they will be going out. So, as they are going out, they are going with their own kinetic energy and they are going out with their temperature. So as the temperature is going out, is removing the temperature, then what will happen? The, the temperature will be cooling. As the energy is going out, as the kinetic energy is going out, then the temperature will be reducing. As the temperature is reducing, what happens? Cooling will begin. So evaporation leads to cooling because the removal of the molecules on the surface of the liquid we reduce the average kinetic energy in the molecule thereby leading to cooling full stop that is what i will say all right the next question there says a kettle rated 2000 watts contains water at 20 degrees celsius the kettle is switched on and after two minutes the water starts boiling he said after another six minutes 45 percent of the of the water in the kettle has boiled away he said determine the specific heat capacity of vaporization of the water and the state one assumption made in your calculation in 9di above all right okay so in that case let me Okay, so if you look at this question, I'm going to start by, let me use a graph. I prefer using this graph. It helps me to understand it better. All right, so on this vertical, I'm going to be plotting temperature, degrees Celsius. And on the horizontal, I'm going to be plotting time in minutes. So this is zero degrees Celsius. 
but at this 20 degrees Celsius, that was the temperature of water at the kettle. Then when you switch on the power source, I mean the heater or whatever, the temperature will go straight. It will go straight. So when it reaches here, which is at 100 degrees Celsius, you know something will happen. But that happened after what? Two minutes. So when it got to 100 degrees Celsius, according to you know, the principle, it will no longer keep on going. What happened? It will delay a little according to the latent heat, which is called the hidden heat. So delaying a little said in the further what? Six minutes. You say after another six minutes. So what happened? Evaporation has started here, but after six minutes, 45% of them have gone out. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to do is stage by stage. The first stage is from here to here, which I'm going to say that power energy, which is power times time, is given as mass, or is, is given as the quantity of heat between 20 and 100, which is MC change in theta. So what am I looking for? Uh, I want to find the mass because I don't know the mass. So I'm going to say, Mass is going to be equal to power times time divided by specific heat capacity times change in temperature, which is power is 2,000 times time is 2 minutes. 2 minutes is 2 times 60, you know, converting it to seconds. All over um, C, which is um, specific heat capacity of water, which is 4200, is common. Everybody knows it. And in fact, State one assumption made in your calculation. The assumption I made is that taking specific heat capacity of water to be 4,200. I've answered that. So this is change in temperature. That is from 100 to from 20 to 100, which is 80. That is change minus. Okay. So when I cancel these two zeros, cancel these two zeros, cancel this one, I cancel this one. I will now have that this cancel one. This is four. Okay. Let me stop that. This is 20 times. 6 which is 120 all over this is 8 mm -hmm. 120 120 divided by 168 so the mass is given as 0 0.7143 kg so this is the mass of the of the water all right now when it reaches inside here, which is when it enters, you have mass and specific latent heat of vaporization. This is MC change in theta. So when it gets to this point, remember from here to here is six minutes. Okay. So I'm going to say that. Um, okay. So I'm going to say that the power is equal to MLD. But remember, at this point, dt, that is 6 minutes, mass is 45 over 100 of the mass multiplied by the specific latency. So this is what I'm looking for. So power is still 2,000 times time is still what? 6 minutes. 6 times 60 is equal to 45 all over 100 of the mass. What is the mass? 0.7143. And L sub V. So what I'm looking for is the specific latent heat of vaporization. Okay, so at this point I'm going to. Okay, so let me just handle this. I will say, I'll say two thousand times six times six zero, which is seven two zero one two three is equal to. So I'll say forty five times zero point seven. 143 divided by 100 which is 0.321435 L sub V so I'm going to say that L sub V which is the latent heat of vaporization is given as 720000 divided by 0 0.321435 okay which is given as 
2, 2, 3, 9, 9, 5, 5, 0. 2. And it's going to be in what? It's going to be in uh, one of it is equal to ML, which is L is going to be Joe, Joe per kilogram. Okay, so this is Joe per kilogram. All right, so L sub V is given as, let's say, 2.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 2.24 times 10 raised to power 6 joule per kilogram. All right. This is the solution to number 9. Now, let's go to number 10.